people tell me that are in like neutral neutral states, neutral countries say, um, I got a direct quote from a friend, I can't tell you his name, but um, they believe that globalization will largely benefit those who are allegedly, are already prosperous. That it's only gonna benefit the haves and not do anything for the have-nots. I guess that's what they're trying to say. Um, leaving most of the world poorer than before. And it's like, how do you come to that point? Well, they're trying to say, which some of our leaders right now say, oh, the, in a capitalistic market, a capitalistic economy, the, the rich people exploit the poor. And that's not, well, sometimes you can see in a capitalistic economy that that does happen you know that not all of the buyers benefit from the relationship between the buyer and the seller like well but isn't that part of the of a business an economical business model is the bottom line if if the businessman is not is not on the bottom line making profit that's the bottom line profit so that in terms means in a capitalistic economy that not all of the relationships between the consumer and the seller, the consumer and the whatever the other position would be is always a mutualistic or beneficial or benefit, let's say, is a beneficial relationship or even a mutualistic uh, uh, relationship because there are times, yes, Okay, there are a lot of situations where they are exploited. The, the, the poor get poorer, they get taken advantage of, but that's not normally the case in, in a capitalistic economy because that's the American dream. That's what made America this great country that it is today is the capitalistic economy. So when you have people telling you that if you're successful, you didn't get there on your own, if you started a business, you didn't build it on your own. I find that highly offensive. I mean, it, it infuriates me. Like, it almost makes me break down to tears because you're trying to tell me someone that has been raising cattle for 40 years and that has done 16, 18 hours a day, they, they, they didn't get there on their own. They didn't build that business on their own. It doesn't make sense. It's just so highly offensive to sit here and say, that to some entrepreneur especially a young entrepreneur like me that are feeling the hard times that is on like some commercials say a ramen noodle like a a, a, a strict budget like a ramen noodle every night budget <laughs> i mean come on that is so that is so cliche but you know it's true because i'm feeling the hurt so um That's why I just am trying to stay as the against the critics of globalization and, and be an advocate for globalization right now because I promised I wouldn't be a punk. I promised I wouldn't be radical at this moment because I don't have, well, I mean I can do whatever I want but I feel like to reach more people it's better to be congenial than just um, and some of the things that I was doing was offending people and sometimes I, I, I still think I'm gonna I'm gonna be that way sometimes here and there because disagreement negative comments negative feedback whatever that's also a sign of success not just all positive feedbacks all positive comments I mean if, if you're just sitting there and everything is sugar-coated that's not a true sense of accomplishment for me that's not a true sense of um, that's not a, like the, the true sense of success because you know in the face of opposition if you can't stand even if you have to stand alone and hold your ground and, and, and stay confirmed in your beliefs then you're not you're not um, like I said in the face of opposition then you're going to face it and that's a part of being successful and that's why I'm trying to tell all of you young people, even all the people out there that are much older than me, that's why we must stand together, you must stand strong, because tough times are gonna come, and it's only gonna get worse. So, sitting here and being like, oh my God, it's the end of the world, and oh, all this stuff is happening. Well, that's not doing jack squat. That, that's not being proactive. 
that's not showing good character. A, a person that ha is of good character is always looking towards the future, no matter what happens, no matter what they face. I mean, like when 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 things are happening that are bad in your personal life, that are bad in your business life, do you just falter and give up? No. That's not, that's not what would make a good uh, manager, a good store owner. Uh, um, you know, in a post-industrialized society that we're in now, you cannot be weak because out there in the capitalistic market that it is now, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And I hate to say it like that, but you know, that's what the, the free enterprise is what drives most of the jobs. It, you know, even though I would want to say it's 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 Big Brother, it's government that gives all the jobs, most of the jobs in the world. Well, yeah, I, I, I want to believe that. I want to see that. But I just have so many people fighting me in, in opposition, saying no, that's wrong. Well, I know it's the private sector that gives most of the jobs. I mean, I know it's the private sector that has held 75% of its weight, uh, or 83, 75 to 83% of its weight. Um, but at the same time, when we're talking about shovel-ready jobs, I guess you know that's part of globalization. You're you're gonna have to look towards the Allstate, and Big Brother is gonna be there for you. And and if you don't like a welfare nation, then you can get out of the country. You can go somewhere else because that's that's the that's the whole key here, guys. We are a democracy and the great republic has fallen. But it's not anything bad. I mean, Plato wrote, wrote about it and, and talked about it and you know, the fall of the republic was eventually, is eventually gonna happen anyways. I mean, because I don't wanna go too far tonight because that's a little radical. Let's, let, okay, let's give a real life example of what I'm trying to talk about, right? Now, I have been in a family that has comes from farmers. Um, we they have an animal. There's an animal farm. Let's just say that. And um, let's just say we we raise puppies. And if we did raise puppies, like let's put it the democracy example in um, a way of understanding for someone that has a dog or a cat, right? Now, when you get a dog and a cat. You have to get the cat vaccinated. You have to get the cat and or dog dewormed also. It's something you have to do. You know, on top of registering it if you want to breed it, whatever. Um, but put aside the registration, put aside the vaccinations right now. And let's just focus on worms, okay? <laughs> I know it's funny. Now, if you take your cat or dog to a vet and like you have a Democrat, well, in the democracy you have a president and he's your veterinarian and you're basically like okay president uh, veterinarian um, you know globalized doctor I have this dog or cat that's infected with worms and I need to get it dewormed and he'll say no uh uh we live in a democracy remember and you're not the only one that gets a vote the worms the the parasitic the parasites the parasitic worms get a vote too. And because we're in a democracy, the, the, the parasitic worms outweigh your vote. And therefore, the worms vote to stay. And we are not gonna deworm your dog or cat. Because you're only one person, you're only one vote against all of these other worms' votes. So you could look at it that way. But that is, the critics of a globalizing economy in the republic and i'm not gonna sit here and say i agree with that or disagree i'm just bringing you a plain out generalized example to dog owners or cat owners i mean because when you've got that situation you've got to take care of it now what if that was the situation when you went to the vet and that's what they said that the worms get a vote well you know you would lose well try not to look at welfare and don't try not to look at it like that because if you look at it like that you're staring into the abyss and and if you stare into the abyss uh too long at least you be consumed by it so 
try not to do that because it will overtake you and um, you'll see going down that road of darkness there's nothing there for you the people that have been involved with that and 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 it, 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 like devil worship there's nothing there for you it, it only it uses you up and 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 it spins you and it, it, it spins you and then spits you out so don't do it and uh, you know sitting there sounding like that just makes you sound like a depressor anyway so try to turn it around into something yes I was trying to defend that a little bit but try to sit around there and turn it into a good positive thing like I'm always talking about the blessings in disguise always all right moving on to symbolisms and signs because it's an important part of anthropology um, uh, I just wanted to say before we go there uh, another person that in interpreted symbols and signs well okay first of all what made, led me to besides anthropology studies that led me to see how important symbolism and signs are look at look at um, other old world ancient worldly ph philosophers like I'm gonna I'm gonna show I'm gonna read you right now an excerpt from um, Kant um, and says his quote says that causation is not just knowledge but it's also um, conception it's also objectivity so if you kind of interject that into the understanding of symbolisms and signs you, we can transition into what Sigmund Freud was talking about when he did a lot of dream analysis. You know, it's funny that like even now in today, Eastern philosophy and Eastern societies still think that dream analysis, interpreting dreams is very important. It, it's your subconscious mind speaking. It's your subconscious mind's way of telling you something. But in Western culture, it's not interpreting dreams is not important at all anymore it, it's it, it, it's funny isn't it I'm gonna read you this little excerpt the symbolism of dreams in many parts of the world dream symbolism is treated with respect the uh, keepers of wisdom sages uh, wise men interpret dream images and often thought to be sent by the gods and people act on these interpretations or they used to act on the interpretations of dream analysis analysisers or ana 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 analyzers if you want to say it that way we used to joke about them but I'm just saying like on in all honesty seriously the in the ancient world and even now like shamans that have been practicing their shamanistic ways for thousands of years to this day still enter the spirit realm and, and and find that it's highly important that you interpret you interpret dreams and that you act off those interpretations whereas if you talk like this in a, in a uh, post-industrialized American society you look crazy because it's all about monetary things it's all about materialism it's all about secularized ideologies but that's not that's again not living the good life like if we really want to clearly define living the good life this is not going to just happen in one um, session that I'm doing this is going to take time that's why I said bear with me I'm a one-man operation I'm trying to bring you all this information um, and it's it's something that's just going to take time so um, you know like I said uh, Sigmund Freud came up with the major part of dream analysis. He thinks that he always thought that it was very important to reflect on the deepest desires often rooted in, he he thought often rooted in infancy. You know, like he had a pyramid kind of way of understanding things, um, uh, going through life. Uh, you know, at the time, if you understand the time that he was growing up in, you'll kind of understand why his perspective on this is a little warped or perverted. But he thought there was like, during times going through your life, there was like a uh, an oral stage, an anal stage, a phallic stage of, of maturing into an adult. Like when we say, like I strongly believe this, that your personality is derived from two things. 50% of your personality is genetics coming from your family's genes and the other 50% of your personality is your environment. But again, we digress into 
other things and say, oh, your personality is, is you know, and partly due to this, your personality is that. But I strongly stand by that opinion of mine, saying that that's what the two things that make up 100% of your personality. So, I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's something to note that um, Sigmund Freud's pupil, Carl Jung, also noted that and believed that symbolism went deeper than purely sexual uh, uh, desires and sexuality to include a spiritualism dimension, a spiritual dimension. Uh, and, and Jung was fascinated by the way in which ordinary people and objects appear in strange and often distressing contexts in people's dreams and sought to understand why. So, out of the bad comes the good. And, and like again, I think that when you enter REM sleep, when you enter rapid eye movement sleep, which you need to go through two full cycles of it to like what is recommended by the government, that it's a way of your subconsciousness relieving stress. It's a way of your 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 deep mind relieving the stress that your your conscious mind can't always deal with and always relieve. Like when you start to pull your hair out and you're, you're stressing out and you're like, it's okay, just breathe. You're telling your conscious mind to chill out, but at the same time you don't even realize that it's your subconscious that's already motivated your conscious mind to act on those things. Just like right now, I'm not telling my arm to move even though I'm doing it. it my, my active mind is, is consciously or autonomously, autonomously telling it to move. So it's, it's important to note that, you know, right now I'm not gonna go any much deeper in a dream analysis because it's a controversial topic and I just think that the only thing I say there is that when we dream it's a way of our subconscious minds um, relieving stress so that's why excuse me that's why I think sleep is important so um, again once you understand uh, personality that you know, like I said, it's genetics, and the other 50% is environment. That goes all the way back to preconception, conception, and to 10 years old or 12 years old. That's what makes you who you are as an adult. Once you understand that, you can you can start to understand the two types of people, the architects, the archetypes of um, the proponents or the advocates and then the critics of globalization because there's always going to be those two types of people and well I mean there, you know there's a blur in between but for the most part if you say to someone randomly off the street are you for or against globalization there'll be there, there's hardly any in between there's hardly any middle ground there you either are or you aren't just like well I wouldn't say now just like you'll, you'll see a lot of people that are sometimes in between Democratic or Republican families, but that's usually because that's the way they were raised, so that's how they're gonna identify. But I think that it's funny to stop there because I've actually run out of time. My memory card's gonna shut off, and it's late, and I've got a long week ahead of me. So that will be the third, that'll be the third segment of today's show. Um, oh yeah, I did wanna leave you with one thing. Um, oh yeah, okay. So, when I gave you that Kant's, when I gave you Kant's um, quote, because uh, we were still on the topic of living the good life, I just wanted to say, um, in his model, his answer is no. Is it good or is the good will free? And the answer most of the time I found seemed like he was saying no. It's, gift, it's gifts of nature. Um, one, it's courage. Two, it's resolution. Three, it's perseverance. Um, four, it's intelligence. And five, it's wit. And six, it's judgment. So if you say, let's go to break it down real quick gifts of fortune um, there's four gifts of fortune and and this goes back to Pavlov's hierarchy of needs this goes back to you know uh, Eve Browning Coles and Descartes 
uh, simplified pyramid view that I made to try to understand this so I could explain it to you guys really fast. And in that pyramid, gifts of fortune would be one, power, two, help and health, three, riches, and four, honor. So that's like his own way of breaking down this simplified pyramid scheme uh, and, the, and understanding the archetype of living the good life. So if you feel like you're not doing that, I suggest you start working on that because um, you know, in these troubling times, if you're not standing firm with someone or some group of people, you're standing alone. And that's not a bad thing, but it's a hard thing. So <clears throat> I say I'm going to conclude there with today's show. Hopefully, if you follow me, um, follow my websites, uh, continue to follow my blogs, dubstreasurestore.com, um, dubstreasurestore.wordpress.com, and my other blog is dubstreasurestore.com forward slash blog. Now, on my YouTube channel, it was stupid, but I'm not going to go back now. And I was thinking about creating a new YouTube account. But where all my videos are, which you, I know you know this if you're following it, but if you're not subscribed to me, subscribe to me. It's because next week I am going to try to team up with LFG, Low Flying Goose, and his channel and make some Pokemon and Magic the Gathering battle reviews. Um, and we always try, I always, lately I've been putting them under his channel. So I think because he's uploading first, he's getting the most traffic, um, but he doesn't represent me. He's just an associated affiliate of mine. And that's why now I'm gonna start uploading them to my channel first. So go to youtube.com for, forward slash user forward slash Mr. Dub 023 because I was 23 when I created the account. That's, I, don't even, I didn't even know that that was gonna, that that was gonna be my, us, the username was gonna be my actual channel name. It's stupid, but. Follow me there, because I am going to get some entertaining stuff. I'm not always just going to throw this crazy knowledge out there at you. But in the times we're at, I couldn't hold this message back anymore. So that was my review on The Dark Knight. Uh, I'm glad that I still kept that, because what amazing timing that was, even though you know I didn't do a, a synopsis or an analysis on The Batman Begins. And, uh, you know... Closing, I want to make a closing statement on that. Um, you know, they say fluoride is good for your teeth and fluorination water is good for you. But um, there's studies out there and there's documents out there that proves that it leads to sterility. It leads to weakening bones in men. But it, isn't it funny to note that in Batman Begins that the leader of the um, the occult in the first one, the Begins, it's the uh, the secret assassins guild that they had in there, that they wanted to pour, poison the water of Gotham City to bring order out of the chaos when, it, when everybody drank that water and it made them mad. Isn't that interesting that you find, like going back now, you find those messages hidden in the movie after you get educated or you start to think about stuff like that, you don't see it. That's what I'm saying. I'd like to hear from some psychologists or some anthropologists comment on my videos and tell me, let me know if the subliminal programming in these movies is really as powerful as I'm starting to think, or if it's you know in our subconscious mind, or if it's just like the, you know, people are just talking out of their rear. I don't know. I'd like to just know what you guys think. M make comments. Uh, let me know if you like this video, like it or dislike it, I don't care, but I, I'm, I'm just, you know, eager to hear from what you guys think, alright? So, take care, everybody, and I'll see you back next week.